Hello everyone! A question we get asked a lot and an important skill to know and possess is how to center your steering rack. I'm going to start by showing you the three different things that we offer that may prompt you to want to center your rack in the first place, and each differs just a bit, so let's get started. We have plenty of other videos explaining why you need these and or how much extra lock or what they do in the first place. This video is here to show you how to make your rack sit pretty after the install for each one. Now starting from the left to right, you have our slip-on rack spacers. These are equal length, meaning they are equal on both sides of the rack. Next up are our offset rack spacers, again being even on both sides, meaning equal for your convenience. And lastly, on the right we have our bolt-on rack spacer, which is the odd man in the bunch being uneven, as in not the same, as in different from side to side. One small spacer and one big. This is all that's needed to unlock max angle from the rack thanks to Nissan's design, but for now let's cover how to center your Chi for each and every one. Now why would you want to do this in the first place? Maybe you just installed a whole new front end setup, a new rack, or anything else to change the front alignment. Maybe you're close to being straight but are getting more lock one way or the other, or maybe you're just OCD and want to make sure things are picture perfect. Whatever the case may be, this is how to get to getting. Let's start with attempting to make sure your wheel is straight when your wheels are. Maybe give a look out your window to make sure you aren't flexing your dank angle before starting. So an easy step one, make sure the wheel is straight and the wheels are somewhat close to matching. Then if you pop underneath the car and take a look, you should have a glorious evenness coming out of each side of the rack. This example is being shown with no spacers, so it's a good baseline for those centering with no add-ons. Now grab a trusty straight and preferably metal ruler and measure from the edge of the rack to the start of the inner tie rod, which in this case measures 70 millimeters. Swing on over to the right side and measure the same way from the base of the rack to the start of the inner. Now you'll notice that this is the exact same number, aka 70 millimeters, so this rack would be considered centered. Hot damn. Now there are also two things to keep in mind here. One, it doesn't matter what rack you have or what car you are doing this on, this is how you measure center. The number doesn't matter as long as they were equal, and that's all that matters. And B, the measurement always needs to be taken from the base of the rack, which in this case here is an S chassis rack, so it's a bit recessed as you can see on your screen. So don't go and measure from that outer lip there as your it's going to be all f***ed up. So again, make sure to measure from the part that reminds you of your wheel fitment, aka the sunken one. Now say you add on some slip-on spacers, it's very much the same, so if you measure from the inside of the rack, you would now measure to the inside edge of the now slightly extended tie rod including said spacers. This will be your new number, and you want that number to be even on both sides, as you can so beautifully see on the demo on your screen. Moving right along to the offset rack spacers, it's the same damn principle. Even though they are bolt-on, the same theory applies. So when you add the extended part to your maths to get the correct matching numbers, you'll be happy as a clam. So you would measure from the base of the rack to the inside of the offset rack spacer, and doing the same for the other side, making sure you're into the sunken part of that little nook. And since one of these things is not like the others, let's talk about the weird guy, the old lonesome dove, the bolt-on rack spacer. This is the most often installed incorrectly, most emailed about, most popular option, so listen up. Starting with right-hand drive cars, and since this is what we're doing this demo on, the slip-on spacer needs to be fit on the right-hand side, aka the driver side. Then the bolt-on portion goes on to the left side, aka the passenger side. Everyone with the correct hand drive cars, aka left, would do the opposite by installing the slip-on spacer on the left, aka the driver's side, and the big boy would bolt on to the right, aka the correct side for a passenger. Again, both of these being referenced whilst sitting in the car. Now since you essentially uncentered your rack by installing these, since one is a bolt-on and one is a slip-on, you'll need to recenter that bad boy the correct way. Make small adjustments with the wheel and measure the slip-on side from the base of the rack to the inside of the inner tie rod, then head over to the bolt-on side and adjust until even, measuring from the inside of the rack to the inside edge of the bolt-on spacer as shown here. You've now centered the rack within itself, but Dan, why are my wheels now towed like a total DH. Well laddie, you need to go and adjust that sucker back out to get it in line by adjusting each tie rod to get your toe back to that optimal position where it started in the first place.
place. Also make sure that you have as much threat engagement as possible for the safety of you and those around you whilst tandeming on any track or just driving on the road. This is very important. Your steering wheel is now going to be all out of whack, which sucks. Let's fix that as well. Now a word of caution for those with airbags. Please read your FSM on how to properly disable your airbag before you remove your steering wheel or choose the B option on the steering coupling when centering your wheel because ain't nobody got time to get popped in the face by a feisty airbag when all you wanted to do was not have a crooked steering wheel. Head inside, obviously. There are two ways to get this done. If you already have a super ultra sick stylish aftermarket wheel like the GK Tech one shown on your screen, your life is going to be easy. Pop out the horn button, then zap off the nut holding the wheel down. Be careful as not to let the wheel move, give the wheel a few wiggles, and pop yourself in the face when it finally comes off for good measure. Now reposition the steering wheel to make sure that it's straight, and if everything is kosher at this point, pop the nut back on, and then tighten and torque to the spec shown on the screen. Then toss the horn back on, and you're solid AF. The second way to get this done, if for some reason you don't want to remove your wheel, or maybe you're terrified of airbags, and pro tip, unplug it, by looking at the FSM, you get to do this the hard way via the steering shaft itself. As a good rule of thumb, mark the current location with a paint pen or marking tool of choice if you ever wanted to go back to the OEM clock. Now, when marking, make sure to do both the bottom coupling and the top to the shaft as well. And from there, loosen and remove that top bolt, then head down a bit lower and loosen and remove the bottom bolt. Pop the lower off the rack itself and head back into the car, center the wheel, then pop the coupling back back on the rack stub, then toss the bottom bolt in, tighten that down, toss the top bolt in, then tighten and torque both to the specs shown on the screen. This is the exact same as doing it from the steering wheel, it's just more of a pain in the ass, especially on some cars. It all depends on what's easier and or safer for you, and will vary drastically from car model to car model. Now that the wheel is straight in one way or another, bless it with your holy downward swipe, and as shown here, we shall begin the ritual of making sure you did it correctly. Starting with the wheel centered as shown, spin it in whatever direction you choose, a full 360 degrees to where it's pointing straight up and down again as shown. This is one full rotation. We're going to keep on going. Now from here you want to make a note of where the steering wheel stops, which in our case, after blasting some computations through Wolfram Alpha, came out to 1 and 7 eighths turn center to lock. Bless that wheel once again for good measure and move right along. There are many factors that determine when your rack will stop, so don't freak out if you aren't exactly 1 and 7 eighths like we are. Each rack is different and the only thing that matters is that it's even from side to side. Speaking of which, to do this, go back and center from the other direction, pause to reflect, and then keep going until centered once again. Now continuing the ritual, turn the wheel the other direction, a full 360 big ones again, and we are hoping and praying at this point that everything is going to be even. So keep that going, and it should. Stop again at the blessed 1 and 7 eighths turns, which once again is just for our car and setup, and yippee skippy, we're even AF. Now give the final blessing as this is exactly what we want, so go ahead and unsteer the wheel back to recenter, just like your chi has been done now. You can now go ahead and close the ritual. Pro tip, you can do this step with the outers disconnected, making sure the rack is centered before you bolt everything back together and or have to make many, many adjustments again. The old measure 64 times and cut one supplies here as well. So in conclusion, this step gets overlooked often and will cause you to have a horrible day at the track or make your U-turns on the street uneven and frustrating. Just make sure that the rack has even spacing on each side, that the wheels are straight, and finally that your steering wheel isn't pointed off to the left or right like your third cousin twice removed's lazy eye. This is the crew that brings you these final little nuggets of knowledge wrapped in a super pretty package and shipped to the YouTubes via 56k modem. If you can't handle these steps, have a pro do it and or reach out to us with any questions you may have via electronic mail. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and I swear to God I don't mind you the straight Zach with another GK Tech How-To. Peace.